This is Darius from the Shot Call, and I'm sitting here with Kasing after a, a loss against Rocket, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So what happened there? Um, I think we played the early game quite well, like to what we were kind of expecting. But I think when it came to a point where, not even mid-game, like just after we swapped, we kind of made like an indecisive call to go in. And like, it, how do I say it? Maybe I've, in my mind, I think we just basically, we should have won a team fight based on the fact that we were much stronger or at a power spike. But the fact that we just pulled the trigger too early, in my opinion, I guess. And then after, yeah, we just lost the fight. And then after the, the game kind of snowballed after they got like four kills. And then, yeah, it was just pretty bad after. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was it the the fight that went up in, in top lane with yeah. the TP play and stuff? Yeah, that was really close in terms of HP and everything. A uh, bit unlucky, I guess. Yeah, I think honestly it was a fight that it should have been on our favor, provided we played it correctly. But I think honestly we just we were just impatient and enough to just like didn't play it correctly and enough to yeah we just lost the fight. <laughs> Um, now, uh, one thing that Norse Garen did amazingly, to be fair, was uh, block the Orn ult with his um, Brom shield. Uh, was that a very decisive factor? Because, you know, if that could have come in per perfectly, could have turned the fight around. <clears throat> I think, honestly, like, of course, Brom is a really good counter to Orn because of the fact that you can stop his engage. But I felt during this game, we had, like, a lot of opportunities technically, technically to also engage without, without Orn. Like, we had, you know, Skana R, mm -hmm. we had, like, Varus ulti 2 on top. Um, but we just never really like pulled the trigger, and of course maybe it's just the fact that we, we I would say we're still like, how do I say, it, a developing team. I wouldn't say you know we're the, one of the best teams for sure, but it's more about you know, understanding when is a good time to pull the trigger and pretty much like, knowing when to pretty much do make the play on stage because you know maybe maybe in scrims you probably go for the play anyway just because you know maybe you're more confident, but on stage it just felt a bit more different, mm -hmm. and I think that's kind of what made us lose today. Is that something you've noticed in the other games as well? Because obviously you've lost more games than you've won now. Yeah. Uh, is stage fright or stage pressure a bit of a thing right now? I think honestly for the first week we were still like, <laughs> we, I think we were quite clueless actually on, on how to play the game properly or in a macro perspective. But honestly, like I went into this game thinking that we'll probably win based on like our practice. Like we played really good in our practice, but it just didn't really show properly or didn't show us as I thought. Mm. And then after, yeah, it just snowballed from one mistake and then after the game went bad. So one interesting pick we've seen in general uh, from the G2 series to your series now, Skana all of a sudden popped up. Is he such a good pick right now that you absolutely need to uh, need to pick him? Is he a recommendation for solo queue even? Um, okay, so basically Skana, like, <laughs> I can't talk too much about this, but okay. I think Skana is like really strong champion because I think 1v1 he can still duel like other junglers, not to mention like in 2v2s he's quite strong too because you know he can provide CC and have good damage on top. So I think that's the reason why Skana is good, not to mention he has like really good clear speed with the those crystal scars I think they're called. Um, but yeah, I think at the moment Skana became quite good because of the fact that like you basically with Unseal Spellbook you can basically go flash and your flash cooldown is like much lower compared to the enemy who doesn't run Unseal Spellbook and that's one of the main reasons why Skana became good. Because it gives you a tool to engage as well. Yeah. And, um, yeah, didn't quite work out this nah. time. It uh, didn't work out in the G2 series <laughs> either, but, you know, uh, it's still an in interesting pick to see all of a sudden. Do you think that Nunu, you know, you've, you've heard about the Nunu boss probably. Do you think that he will be ridiculous in, like, the next kind of thing? I mean, honestly, Nunu has been ridiculous in solo queue from what I've seen. Like, I think I've permabanned this champion after I lost to it or won him <laughs> okay. a bit. I was like, nah, this champion cannot be open. Okay. So maybe if it's open next week for sure, I, I think we will see Nunu. Oh boy, uh, I'm very. <laughs> that's gonna be interesting for sure. Yeah. I mean, we haven't seen like a competitive. When's the last time we've seen a competitive Nunu? You know, like... actually, I think it was. It was at Worlds. Like, was it? I think it was at Worlds. I think someone played Nunu, but I don't remember who. Maybe at the playing stage or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't remember exactly. No, I don't remember. Yeah, well. But I remember someone did picking Nunu. I remember seeing. I was like, well, why would anyone pick this champion? <laughs> And now he's basically one of the most OP ones in the game right now. Yeah, just one patch, you know, <laughs> one yeah. buff and turns the worst jungler to the best one. So, yeah, yeah. Riot, Riot balance team are pretty good. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I love Riot. I love Riot games. Yeah, yeah I mean, so, okay, you've been with uh, multiple teams at this point, um, right? You've been um, with Vitality and really impressed there. You did tryouts with TSM. Um, you've been 
at the uh, at the EU LCS for a very long time as well. You've been with like at H2K. Was it 2012? I think. 2015. To, oh, okay. Then, <laughs> then the Wikipedia. I was still in college. <laughs> uh, okay. Then the Wikipedia uh, entry must have been wrong or something. Oh, I don't okay. know. Well, uh, but yeah, you've also spent um, a decent amount of time in Challenger. Now, you, now you're back on the main stage. Do you think? Do you still think that you've got it to be one of the top tier supports? Because you definitely were during your time at Vitality. I think honestly, like, I don't really. How do I say it? Individually, I don't really like focus on how I am as a player. Like, of course, I care, but I would I care more. Or that my top priority is just how we play as a team. And it doesn't matter if even if I'm the best support in the world or best, the worst support. Like, if I can't make my team shine, then it doesn't matter what I am. So how I see it right now is like. My role right now in this current meta is pretty much, you know, we're playing a lot of tanks and basically knowing when to pull the trigger and stuff. Like, you know, maybe not with Tom Kench since Tom Kench is more like an ulti to kind of catch people out. But regarding like, you know, you, there's champions like Alistair, um, even Shen, like knowing when to use these kind of ultimates is, is really, really nece uh, a big necessity for your team. And I think honestly, just how, how to play better as a team is probably the most important rather than being individually the best. So, yeah. So in that case, then no, I'm not the best support. I will look, obviously look to try and be, you know, because I believe I can still like be where I was before mm -hmm. or even better, but of course it'll take time. Now, Splice has been reformed in a way, uh, as you've mentioned before, uh, for new members, including yourself, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if this team finds its wuju, if, it's, if it finds its place, uh, where do you think you realistically could be in terms of like the ULCS? I think with spring split anyway, like obviously with the results that we've probably given right now is looking quite bad. Mm. Um, I would say it's not too bad because right now we're actually learning way more than like if we had won. So for example, you know, during our series against Fnatic, even though we lost that, um, we actually learned quite a lot in terms of you know, how we should have played and what we could have done and stuff. And, you know, just basically how to, how to play perfect, perfect in terms of macro. Um, and I think right now, with the way we're going out right now, like our play style is that we're still kind of finding our identity. And um, I think using spring split as more of a, a split to basically improve and you know just trying to figure out what's best for us as a team, our style is pretty much the main main goal. And I think right now we're probably like a top six, top eight, top nine, top ten team. You know, you can it can be anything because I don't know. Win, win loss obviously doesn't matter in the end, but I think. We can probably be a top four team for sure mm -hmm. by the time Spring Split ends. So that's my goal anyway. Okay. Top, te top 10 team in the ULC is right now. That's impressive. Anything you would like to say to the Splice fans? I mean, you know, thank you guys for watching us and uh, supporting us. But today was not the best day. <laughs> we, we lost the rocket. But yeah, don't worry, guys. We'll definitely make it back and come back for the Spring Split. You heard it from Kissing. This was Darius from the Shock Caller. Thank you very much for your time. See you then. Bye-bye.